Hello everyone and welcome to yet another clan war. It has been a long time. I'm Leonis and here with me is Brainless. No hellos? Hello everybody. <laughs> okay. You left me hanging there for a minute. Anyhow, let's take a quick look at the bracket. We'll be, uh, we'll be having a best of six with an extended ace uh, of one map. So it will be a best of seven total. We are ready on the first map, which will be Neo Humanity. Uh, and it's going to be a very high level match between John Bomb and Tequila. They both are high level Masters players, so this is going to be an exciting one. Neo Humanity, here we go. Can we have a loading screen for once? No altitude, you got them. Stupid map thingy! How dare you! The the struggle with StarCraft casting tool was real. Yeah, the casting tool sometimes it goes very well, sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't, it's a pain. God damn! <laughs> I also wish we had a transition to the game. I would also be okay. What the hell? Anyhow, on the bottom right corner of Neo Humanity, we have in blue. I'll do that in just a minute. Uh, in blue, we have the Protoss Tykila. And in the top left of the map, playing with red Zerg drones, it is Pigpen's own John Bomb. Woohoo! Slagging a tiny bit, don't do not mind that. Let's raise brainless a tiny bit because somebody asked. And by somebody I say um I mean Bulia. And this should be fine. Why talking Bully, of course, who okay. organizes these clan wars for us and we should um be all thankful for him spending his time and gathering us every other week it seems for a pick pan versus no cap clan war the drum bomb going already for a pull first that's already interesting because usually bully uh, sorry uh, drum bomb always goes for a very macro intensive game i don't know whether or not he he thinks that uh, I, I mean these players know each other very well um pikman and and no cap usually do and i don't know if he wants to exploit an early game uh lack of awareness of that killer or or he just doesn't doesn't feel right on the matchup in the later game uh anymore or something along those lines anyhow we'll, we'll have a slight pressure here with eight zerglings just trying to force a little bit of micro dance between the, the Zerglings and the, the Zealot. No? Yeah, well, on this map, it's Ooh. actually quite easy to hold. Ooh. Okay, second Zealot comes out, and all the ooze uh, mean nothing at all because we just lose one link for just a few, a few damage points on the Cyber Core. Everything will be fine as soon as the Zedept uh, comes out, but. In the meantime, what do we have for Protoss? Basically, is very standard. A little bit of a delay on the on the build because of the uh, of the two Zealots that came out very early. Yeah, but as I was saying, on this map, uh, it's even less of a delay because you can wall off with just two structures, so you don't need to put down the additional gateway. Uh, yeah. The depth shades across Zealot has been. Almost caught by the links. Uh, the adept will be found by the links, by the by. Surrounded, maybe uh, a little mm. bit of a oh. slow reaction, canceling the shade. Yeah, and it, the adept can try and uh, micro its way out of this mess, but it's still a messy situation to be in. Actually, no shades. Yeah, uh, he will escape because the speed is not ready, but she will be on the very few well, hit points. She cannot scout that, anything. Actually. She didn't scout the the expansion. We know there is an expansion. Probably um, Dekila knows as well because of the lack of additional zerglings or no no banelings whatsoever. 
So he knows it's not um, an all-in by any by any mean, but already lacking like, scouting is a pain because you don't know what what to expect. But, but it. maybe drown bomb strategy work because Dequila is floating quite a bit of minerals. Um, oh no, never mind. He's going to take a fairly fast third, it seems. All right. Um, All right. He cannot defend it yet but he'll have uh, an oracle in just a few minutes and that will scare along with the with the pylon and the adept tucked in it will scare off any any uh, zergling attack trying to to kill the expansion we have a very good scout by john bomb coming in uh, seeing the oracle coming out uh double f uh, forge twilight even so he knows there will be a transition into a mid-game army and probably that will mean uh, a mid-game push as well. Well, you know what, how it goes. If you have a spike, you should use it. And these players are good enough to always uh, know their, their own timings. Relation? Yeah, just confirming what couldn't be scouted. But I think that Kila knew already what was happening in John Bond's base. And he should know he should be comfortable at this point. But he just wanted the confirmation and maybe some drone damage. Oh, he gets two drones and he probably... Uh, he's wasting a little bit of energy on that spore color. Could have probably chased another drone uh, with that oracle. But the oracle doesn't take... Almost, uh, doesn't almost take any uh, hull damage. Well, spoke too soon. <laughs> uh, of course, Caster's Curse immediately kicking off. Uh, uh, yeah, but the the Oracle gets a good read. Uh, boy now, three. 51 workers for both players going on 52. And I almost feel that in this situation, it favors the Protoss a little bit because... Um, Zerg likes to be a little bit ahead on workers. Well, usually uh, the the rule is uh, oh, really this is still a, a bit quiet. They say I'll fix that in just a second. As always, saying oh no, you don't want to lose the oracle. That always, always is a problem. Indeed. Anyhow, and uh, then okay, go ahead. Six six gases for John Bomb, and a lair just starts. Are we five gases? Are we going to see a mutalisk transition? Because that's way too many gases for roaches. Or is it going to be roach hider? It might be a roach hider because we saw a, um, a stargate on the other side. So we might see some, some hydra transition. As a matter of fact, it would be actually useful. Because these army is flimsy and he as hell. And they do have a void ray which would uh, otherwise be uncontested. One thing uh, we were saying that I was agreeing on is the fact that uh, John Bomb desperately needs to, to take this fourth base because Zerg likes to be one base ahead and by likes uh, we mean that John Bomb will lose the game without a fourth base uh, as long as the Protoss remains on, on three. Okay, the Stalkers get, gets picked off and they kill us wisely returns to its own base he knows that he has the advantage when it comes to economy so he doesn't need to push out any any further he wants to wait for plus two maybe charge to be finished as well and he'll be back for more in a few but i actually don't like this this move out right here because it's basically the only army that daikila has and if you lose that it's gg exactly and there's not a lot of it Right, the, if we're going for, uh, so right now we have what, um, 16 stalkers and three charge lots? That is not a good enough army. Uh, I mean, without a shield battery, this army is toast, but nice force field are trying to stall this fight for quite some time, retreating the army back. And we see Daikela desperately trying to find a, a some way to, to Give oh, some nice, <laughs> some, nice some sacri edge. sacrifices of stalkers to to get banelings to blow up on them, uh, and the Kila holds uh, the attack extremely well, and the Void Ray is gonna clean up uh, with the stalkers is gonna clean up the rest of oh. the roaches. 
I almost feel like those banes would have been better used by blowing up the wall in the natural and rushing in there. Well, uh, instead of probably. trying to break down the... Uh, instead of trying to kill down the army. Yeah. The army was a little bit out of position, but he... But the killer managed to find some time, and uh, that means that he's also able now to counter attack. Now, stalkers against zerglings, especially on creep, is not a fight you want to take, so he needs to be extra careful here. Trying to blink damage here and there, blink back the units. Nice to run by, by John Bomb, though. Will yeah, be absolutely. enough. And... And the stalkers are a good microable unit, but fighting zerglings on creep with five ravage, six ravager backup is not where you want to be at. Uh, Biles take out some of the zerglings, but Actually, they, overall, they were very insanely good accurate. The um, uh, the Biles from Jumbum, they were just a tiny bit uh, off, and they managed to to hit the zerglings instead, which seems like a, a blunder, but it was. Very close no, it to was being very, good. very good, very good uh, bile, like predictive biles to punish the retreating army. Uh, but we see two attacks and two really good holds for the defending player. Uh, and they traded an army, but the Kila's economy is really surging ahead. 90 workers, yeah. 10 gateways, uh, and 8 gateways, sorry. Uh, and he is getting ready to basically have a run by in every mineral line, have a massive army roaming the map, and I think the only thing that he needs to make it better is a warp prism. Unfortunately, Jum for Jumbum, he's going to go into, into Spire, and unless he wants to go for very high-tech units like Broodlords and Corruptors, I don't think he'll, he'll have any use out of, of Mutas, because we don't have... Like, even if he if he manages to um, to hit the economy of Daikila, it's already too late to, to do anything about that. If he wants instead to use the, the mutas to distract the army, we already have Archons. And Archons, like, one Archon and one Shield Butcher will will hold an, un, an untold amount of mutas. It's almost silly. Yeah, and Daikila is getting Storm. Uh, he is sending Rumbys to all the uh outer bases right one after another and this run by is actually gonna probably clean up that base in the top as john bob's army is gonna be busy dealing with the move out of the killer's army and the base falls as you were saying and the killer will also scout by uh, by its own run by if he if he manages to catch the sight of it the mutas popping out of the eggs because there's no way that the Zealots are going to kill eggs. That's simply a non a non issue. A run by on a base that doesn't exist yet. And that ju just shows how confident that killer is in his own position at this point. He tries to do a run by here, but the army is very close by. And I think I think we'll we'll have to see a slow bleed out from from Jumbo. Well, the mutas show up attacking the zealot run by as you predicted, and they run into a grinder of archons. Oh no, uh, Jumbo loses two mutas for free. Basically for free. Uh, at the same time, though, he manages to catch this base building up, and he'll be able to cancel at the very least. He was a kill, as a matter of fact. Always nice to see from from the pigpen viewers. And oh, but yeah. there's four Stargate production of all right. phoenixes, so four phoenixes are already out. With a shield battery, they can definitely deflect 13 mutas. But the army of the Kila might be a little bit out of position, and nope, but it comes back and rotates. Uh, New Humanity is a fairly small map. The storms go down. My god, these And storms. the Lings, oh no, the Lings are just shredded by those storms. Uh, well, there's a bunch of up. Ravagers, but the, um, the Kila is trying to disengage, and this army cannot really contest a disengage on, on shield batteries. It is a trying their best to deal damage to uh, to the zealots, but remind uh, remember that we have plus one shields against plus zero uh, air weapons for Zerg. That means that these mutas barely deal any damage because we also have one base armor on the on the zealot. 
Raptosa are being shown as well and Dahikela knows that I mean he's very confidently going into carriers he doesn't even care that we already have um, a lot of Corruptos out he just wants to to destroy Jumbom even though he already has the answer for his, his next phase I mean, it, yeah, it for, probably for will work. Sorry, for carrier production, um, would be curious to see if he adds a couple of Tempests to fully transition into a late game air toss uh, once he trades off a few of the ground based units. But the healer is maxed out. He's starting to work on a bank, uh, 93 worker, 5 base economy. This is. Jump bomb tries Nearly to over into for this jump bomb, I think. I mean, this run by of the Zerglings into the natural will be cool and all, but the main army gets absolutely destroyed by the Archons and the Storms. The carriers don't even have to do anything; they they just are there for for show, mainly. Yeah, and GG gets called, um, the Kila, with a very confident hold of the early aggression, and just makes just runs away with the game from there.